Hi there, and welcome to this lecture. In this video, we will look at how we can make web requests and parse responses using Mojo User Agent. First of all, why are we using Mojo User Agent? Just to clarify, there are definitely other modules in Meta CPAN ecosystem that allows to make and parse web requests. However, I find Mojo User Agent to be very user friendly and feature rich. And this is what the Mojolicious framework is using behind the scenes. So it's definitely a solid choice. Mojo User Agent includes some upgrade features like parsing various content types, for example, JSON to Hashref, sending and receiving data via WebSockets, and probably one of the most awesome functions, async requests using promises. If you come from JavaScript background, you might be very familiar with these. However, if not, in summary, promises are non-blocking async tasks you put in background while running your code, and they will resolve, so to say, once the task has been completed. If it does not make sense, no worries, we will look at a basic example in a minute. Now as before, where you want to start, you want to go to Meta CPAN and you want to look for Mojo colon colon user agent. So if you open this up, as before, the documentation is quite good here and it gives you a lot of nice examples of how you can run them with promises in async, even how to use WebSockets and running multiple requests in parallel, but one step at a time. Let's start by copying the module name, going to our terminal, and installing it. So as before, cpanm and the module name, and we're gonna hit the turn. This is gonna take a minute or two, and I'll see you back when it's done installing. Now the module has done installing, and we're ready to proceed running some web requests. So where do we go from here? Well, as before, we want to start by using the module. So use mojo user agent, and let's save our file. Now let's go to our browser, and what I'm going to be using is this website called JSON placeholder type code. So basically what this website is, it just kind of gives you these mock responses in a JSON format. And this is exactly what we want to do. We just want to test simple web requests using get to fetch some posts, for example. So I'm going to be using posts and we can see that if we access posts, we're going to get 100 items and we can also access specific posts before forward slash one forward slash two and so on. Let's copy this link, which just accesses the first post, and let's go back to our code. Now here, I'm going to declare a variable, I'm gonna say my post, and I'm gonna set it as a string, and here I am just pasting in the link we just copied from our browser. Now, how do we call this URL? Well, we need an instance of a user agent, and as you know from before, you get instances from classes by calling method new. So what we can do is we can say my, UA for user agent equals mojo colon colon user agent arrow notation new. And now we have access to functionality of this module on this instance. Now let's see how we can make a get request. If you go back to documentation, we're going to see that in order to get data, we need to call method get followed by the URL and we also need to call result. So let's try to do that. If we print something out from UA arrow notation get followed by the link which is stored in our post variable and then call result which is result semicolon go to our terminal run our script perl script.pl it looks like we actually need this additional package to be installed in order to run secure requests. So since we're calling HTTPS, we need IO socket SSL to be installed on our system. So let's run cpanm IO socket SSL. Let's wait for this to finish installing. Right, and this is perfectly normal. This is actually great that we are getting these errors because now we can look together into how we can resolving these dependencies. Now let's see if we can install this module. So if we do cpanm run net sslea, wait for this to finish installation and looks like it failed again. Perfect. I mean, this happens all the time and uh, no need to be scared or throw in the towel and give up. So let's look at the build log. I am going to Print this out, what's in the build log. It's going to say, could not find lib SSL headers. And looks like we're actually missing open SSL required files in our system in order to install this package. If you do get an error about not being able to install that ELS module, and if you're on Mac, what you want to do, you want to run this command. You can see in the terminal, which is brew install open SSL. And that should take care of all of the dependencies needed for that module. So I already have it installed and I sanity checked if everything is working and it is. And hopefully it's going to be working for you as well. However, if you are on a distribution like Ubuntu, what you want to do, you want to run this command, which is sudo apt get install libssl dev. 
All right, so hopefully the installation finished for you without any issues. Let's try to run our script again. And I did not install the full module yet. We run the script and yes, it says that IO socket SSL is missing. So if you rerun the installation, so cpnm, IO socket, SSL, run this. Let's wait a minute and that should be fine. And I'll see you back once it's done. All right, so the installation finished for me without any issues and hopefully it's the same for you. But if you're facing any difficulties whatsoever, please do leave a comment and we can look into it together. Right, after all this hustle, let's go back to our script and let's see if it's working now. So pro script.pl, if you run this, what are we going to get? Right, so we see that this is actually an instance of an object. But here we're printing out an instance of something and something being message response. Now the question is, what are we missing to actually get the body of the response? Well, if we go back to the documentation, we can see here in quick JSON API request in basic authentication, we don't really need the authentication part, but from the example below, we can see we're calling result that we are doing in our code as well, but it looks like we're not actually calling JSON method. So it seems that when we're calling result, we're getting back an instance of response, and there's also a method to request the parse JSON body. So let's do that. Let's call the result and arrow notation JSON, save that, try to call the mock API again, and we're going to get hash. Well, this looks better because this is actually now a hash ref. So that just means we want to print this through dumper. Because if we're just printing a hash ref, we're going to get the reference in memory as we saw before. So that's why we need to use the dumper. Third time, the charm. Here we go. We got back a JSON body, which was parsed into a hash ref. And this looks all good. You can use other potentially quite useful methods on the result itself instead of just getting the body directly. For example, I could save the result into result equals here I get post result and without calling JSON, let's just say some stuff such as result is success. And also let's copy this line and call this method code, which is going to give us the status code. And let's save that, rerun the request, if only I could spell success, so we're missing one S. Let's save that, rerun the request. And here we go. We can see that this request was successful because we got a truthy value back. And here we can see the HTTP code for the successful response, which is 200. And you're not just limited to get requests. You can use put requests or the post requests. You can submit form data, or you could submit JSON data. Depends on a use case, which exactly type of request are you looking for. And the examples here are really great. You can find a blueprint for pretty much anything you want to do with Mojo user agent. Now let's look at something more, a little bit advanced. I talked about these promises at the beginning of the lecture. I did mention that promises allows us to make many requests in parallel without blocking the execution of our code. Now let's put that into practice and see if it's really true. Now if we remove this print part and just simply try to get the same URL a couple of times, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if we do this, we're going to reach out to this URL ten times in a sequential manner, right? So this first request has to succeed, the second request has to succeed, third one, and so on. Let's run this. And let's also remove the variable names because we don't really need that. We don't want store results. We just want to reach out to these URLs and see how long it takes. To time something, you can use this system time command. So let's use that before pro and run our script. All right, it took eight seconds for me to call 10 URLs for the post one. Might be faster for you, might be longer, depends on connection. But average for me is eight seconds. My net is not that great. I think that is quite true. All right, the question is how we can improve this? Well, if we go back to documentation, which is again, pretty great when it comes to showing examples, you can see that there's a comment saying concurrent non-blocking re requests synchronize with promises. Well, that looks promising. So let's keep in mind that we can call the same methods as we did before we get, but we just need to append underscore E for promise. Now let's go back to the code. Let's replace this example with something else. I'm going to construct a couple of promises that we want to resolve in a synchronous manner in our code. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to declare a new array called promises. I'm going to call a map function and I want to call this map function from one to 10 elements. Basically, this is going to give us a new list for one to 10 items, depending on what is returned in the map function. So in the map function, I'm going to do UA user agent get underscore P for the promise. And here, what I want to do, I want to copy the URL that we called before, which is the posts 
with number one. I could of course append a different post number using the current context by dollar sign underscore, but I'm not going to do that because we did look at example using the post ID one. It's only fair that we use the same IDs. So now how we can actually get results back from these promises, you need to use another module and this is going to already be installed when you install Mojo user agent. It's one of the dependencies and it's called Mojo colon colon promise. What this module takes is a list of promises. And how you construct this is mojo promise arrow annotation all where you provide the promises and then you type then. <laughs> and in that then function, it expects a function. So sub. This is just anonymous subroutine. There's nothing really special about this. We're not assigning it to anything. We're just providing anonymous subroutine. And what we can do here, we can get all the promises that have been resolved in a list, but we don't actually need the parentheses since we are accepting a list. And we're going to get this in the argument list. And we have seen this many times before. And this list is going to be populated by this then method. But the question is, what are we actually getting here in this resolved? We're going to be getting back the response object exactly the same as we did get from calling the get link once. So we had to call the result and then we had to request decode the JSON body. What we could do, we could say dumper. And I want to say this for every single result promise, which is the response. We can use a loop, which is for. Same as with if conditionals, we can use some of the loops after the declaration of our code. So here I'm going to say for resolved. And what I want to print out is the current context, which you're getting from this loop, each item in resolved. As I mentioned, this is the response, but it also contains other elements in this resolve. So I'm going to access the first item in the resolved list, the result, JSON, and save this. If you rerun our script with time function, we're going to see that we have a syntax error. This is because we're missing a semicolon after then block. So let's add a semicolon, we run this, and looks like nothing happened. This is because we are actually missing another call after then chained function call. If you look at the documentation, what you also need to do, we need to call the wait to await our promises, which we are not doing. Let's add this wait call as well. Let's chain it after then and rerun our script. Hey, looks like it took only four seconds from doing all of these calls sequentially one by one. So we literally reduce the time to make these requests by half, which is amazing. So this is it for this video. We looked at how we can make web requests using Mojo user agent, parse a request response, check the status codes, and do some very awesome things like making multiple async requests using promises. I hope you found this video useful, and I will see you at the next one.